Lonnie, this is such a great day. We're at the ballpark. Can you smell that? The grass. I smell hot dogs. Oh, man. the hot dogs. I mean, you have everything going on with the sights, the sounds, <laughs> the smells. <laughs> oh, I love hey, guys, this is going to be one of the most fun shows yeah. we've done. We're over here at Parkview Field. Mm. Guess what? Did you know that Fort Wayne has one of the most rich histories in baseball ever? Right. Let's kind of give a little bit of history. First okay. of all, I do know this. In 1862, wait, that was 151 years ago, Fort Wayne formed their, formed their first baseball team called the Summit City Club. However, a lot of the guys had to go to war. Mm -hmm. Half of them didn't come back. So they didn't reband until about 19, 1866. And when they did, they called themselves the Kikiangas. You know why? Oh. Oh. That was Chief Little Turtle's settlement over right where Lakeside Park is, so mm. they named themselves that. Now, wow. in May 4th, 1871, which is the same time as the Chicago Fire, remember that? Mm -hmm. But what they did, Fort Wayne played the first major league baseball game in the country, right here in Fort Wayne. Wow. Then on June the 2nd, 1883, at League Park, which is now known as Headwaters Park, right. Fort Wayne hosted the very first lit ball game. And Lonnie was there. <laughs> no, I know I wasn't there. And uh, Jenny Electric, which is also known as General Electric, provided these, these arc lights. Back, actually, they were invented here, very powerful lights. There were 17 of them scattered throughout the field. They pulled it off. 2,000 people gathered, 25 cents per ticket. That's $500. By the way, hot dog sales went through the roof. <laughs> and they pulled it off. It was so-so. The local newspapers were kind of critical, but they pulled it off, and it's, well, it's been... But think about it. Yeah. Nobody had lights even in their houses during no. that time, so it was pretty no. revolutionary. Yeah, it and it wasn't it was. until 1988 that the Chicago Cubs finally got uh -huh. a lit stadium in uh, at Wrigley Field. So Fort Wayne got something over on Chicago. Oh, yeah, for it. once. And then it was 1943. Well, they started the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League then. They brought that to Fort Wayne. It was 1945, and the Fort Wayne Daisies were born oh, okay. oh, right yeah. here, yeah. just like in that movie, A League of Their Own. Okay, okay. In 1993, Fort Wayne joined the Midwest uh, Baseball League, and we became the Fort Wayne Wizards. I remember that. Okay. And we had yeah. a really nice uh, mascot called Dinger the Dragon, if you'll remember that one. Uh, Dinger. I know what Dinger is. Every night, my wife calls and says, don't be late for Dinger. <laughs> Din dinner. <laughs> dinner. Dinner. Din oh, din no. Dinner. Yeah, I'm dinner. I, I love That's old people. I oh. <laughs> Guys, you got it all wrong. No. True. Dinger is like a home run. When you send it over the fence, it's a dinger. Oh. You ever play the Sandlot? No. No. Okay. okay. Wait. No idea what you're talking about. It was also um, somebody at um, Sesame Street was named. Uh, oh, one of the okay. Puppets. Yeah. Okay. All valid responses, but no. Dinger the Dragon was the mascot. Oh. But then in 2009, Fort Wayne headed downtown here to Parkview Field, where we became the Fort Wayne Tin Caps, named after Johnny uh, Appleseed, mm -hmm. and Johnny Tin Cap became the mascot. Wow. Mm -hmm. Hey, do you guys remember wow. about two, three years ago when we all had our big office party here? In fact, Lonnie, I think oh, I remember you I throwing did. out the oh. first pitch. Is that <laughs> I threw it right down the old strike zone like that. By the way, I've got me a baseball. Right here, here's the baseball. Oh, uh, wait. It's I thought you were getting an autograph. It, it's, I signed it. I did. Wait, you signed it? I did. Uh, I did. Why do you still have it? Uh, nobody wants it. That's oh. all right. <laughs> That's you know, Lonnie, I was here that night. Thank you. It was a magical night. I mean, the crowds were here. All the Granite Ridge people were here. I only remember one thing. And that's that guy walking up and down the stands going, popcorn, oh. peanuts, <laughs> Cracker Jack, oh, yeah. 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 Absolutely, Cracker Jack. Take me out to the ball oh, game. Oh, yeah. Take, Take me out to the, the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and Cracker Jacks. Welcome to Between the Studs. We are Granite Ridge Builders, custom builders serving Northern Indiana, Northwest Ohio, and also parts of Southern Michigan. We have been building custom homes for almost two decades, and we're really passionate about what we do. So join us today as we explore the processes, the trends, and also tips that characterize today's new home. Thanks for watching. Welcome back. We are on sacred ground. We are over here at Parkview Field, as we said before. We're gonna talk a lot about the Fort Wayne downtown redevelopment. And guess what, guys? It all started here. Mm -hmm. yeah. It all started here April 16th, 2009. Ooh. And, and a lot of people didn't think this was going to happen. I mean, there was a lot of people who doubted this. And, you know, I was I'll raise my hand. Yeah. I, I was one 70%. of them. 70%. Actually, I hope I, people uh, doubted I knew it from the start. I knew it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, we had a perfectly good stadium over there by the Coliseum that wasn't that old. And they were like, let's tear it down and build up a new one. 
What? <laughs> it's true. <laughs> and in 2009, Parkview Field was named Ballpark of the Year by Baseball Digest. Pretty and amazing. then also, they were named the best minor league baseball experience in 2011, 2012, 2014, and 15. Pretty impressive. <laughs> Pretty impressive. Really, really impressive. Really was. And if you've never been down here, you don't know what you're missing because it is amazing over yeah. here. This stadium is 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 so much fun. Mm -hmm. And this all really came about because a company called Hardball Capital, they bought the Wizards back in 2006 and then they started working with the city of Fort Wayne to try to develop a stadium down here in downtown Fort Wayne. That's pretty revolutionary back there. In fact, I think, didn't you like the playground here just as much as any? <laughs> oh yeah, okay. it's my favorite playground. <laughs> now in 2007, the Fort Wayne City Council approved the Harrison Square project, which included the ballpark, a new parking garage, it included um, a new park, it included a hotel and commercial and retail space. So there was a lot going on with that project and it's really how this all became about. And you know, Caleb, when we did that, um, we were working on um, some remodeling for Harrison when it was done. Yeah. And we put together a studio so they could see what those things would look like. But even then, back then, everybody was still doubting. It was mm -hmm. very, very controversial at that point in time. Mm -hmm. And the ballpark portion started in November of 2007 yeah. then. Now on September 11th, 2008, the City of Fort Wayne, Parkview Health, and Fort Wayne Professional Baseball unveiled the name of the new park, Parkview Field. Mm -hmm. And then October 2nd of 2008 is when they officially went from the Fort Wayne Wizards to the Fort Wayne Tin Caps, named after a local and American folk hero, John Chapman, and of course he wore a tin cap on his head. Now, Izzy, you mentioned the Dragon Dinger. Yeah. What about Wayne the Wizard? I remember going to college, and he was not like Harry Potter, like a fun, lovable wizard, right? I'm not too mad to admit, I'm pretty sure he made me cry a time. It was creepy, it was kind of creepy. Yes. Remember how everybody was waiting to see what the mascot was gonna yes. be yeah. for the new team? I mean, everybody's on pins and needles. And then when it came out, everybody's like, Really? <laughs> I can't get on his head. And now, who doesn't? Yeah, Everybody right. has shirts, yeah, right? right? Everybody has it. I think, Kayla, you've got some pictures with your kids oh, yeah. um, with Johnny. Absolutely. He may have made them cry, but we'll, we'll see. It, it's okay. He made Luke cry, too. Yeah. It wasn't <laughs> just the wizard. It was him, too. Yeah. And then it was on April 16th, as Charity said, that the ballpark had its first game. They beat the Dayton Dragons. Fireworks went off. It was just a beautiful night for all of Fort Wayne, Indiana. Before we start the rest of our show, let's talk about some of those awards and some of the accolades that we are getting for our region. Mm -hmm. Well, number one, Fort Wayne was rated one of the top five minor league sports cities in the country. Mm -hmm. Parkview Field was ranked the number one minor league baseball stadium in the country. Mm -hmm. And as we already mentioned, the first successful place where a baseball game was played under the lights. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we are the home of the Fort Wayne Daisies, a professional women's baseball team from 1945 to 1954. Pretty impressive. Impressive. Also downtown, we have the library, and this is one of the top genealogy libraries in the country. People come from all over to study their ancestry. My grandma loves that. Does she? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I found and my name in one of those books. <laughs> yeah, you can access things from the Salt Lake City mm -hmm. wow. uh, genealogy library here in Fort Wayne. Now, I love Promenade Park here in downtown, and in 2021, it received an award for the Urban Land Institute America's Award for Excellence. I mean, I can't imagine why it wouldn't have gotten that award. Yeah. It really is a great park. And now they're even doubling the size of the Promenade yeah. Park. So and wait think, till we get that award. And I think Kayla should get an award for just saying that. <laughs> <laughs> that was impressive. We were voted the number one place to raise a family and voted the number one most affordable city in America. I like that one. <laughs> and Wallet Hub recently named Fort Wayne as the best run city in America. We were also named the cheapest place to live by U.S. News. You know, and piggybacking on what you two said, Fort Wayne was, was voted the number one place to start a new business. Mm -hmm. And also the fifth safest city in the country. Wow. You know, we've been named an all-American city four times. 1983, 1998, 2009, and 2021. And we have been named by U.S. News and Report the top, one of the top places to live from 2012 all the way to 2022. Wow. Yeah. 
That's a long time. <laughs> I'm glad we live here now. Yeah, right? <laughs> now, Parent Magazine has ranked the Fort Wayne Children's Zoo as one of the top children's zoo in the nation for many years running. Mm -hmm. And another accolade that I'm especially proud of is we're known as one of the most caring cities in the nation. And, you know, we've got our day of service coming up, so we definitely embrace that. No, nope, that caring is a big thing. Care. <laughs> but did you guys know that we have a lot of nicknames, too, for our area? One of the nicknames is Summit City. Mm -hmm. Most people know that we obviously have three rivers. Two of them flow into the town, and one Maumee flows out of town, so we're called Summit City. Also, we are called City of Restaurants, mm -hmm. and we're yeah. getting more and more. Wait, stay tuned. You will not believe the number of restaurants we're going to talk about downtown today. Yeah. Number three, we were voted City of Churches, been there for a long time, almost 200 years, and there is so much architectural style and gems in our downtown, and we're going to talk a little bit about that today, too. Now, there really is so much to talk about in the downtown area, and that's really why we're here today. So we're going to go through all those different parts and pieces of downtown. Okay, guys, let's get okay. your let's station do this. and let's talk okay. about that. Coney Island, I think I can do that. I, I do still think I can do that. <laughs> all right, guys. Back in the day, they used to call me the Great Bambino, too. We're standing here on sacred ground. Babe Ruth has a ton of history in Fort Wayne. And one of the greatest stories of all time comes from right here in Fort Wayne. Babe Ruth, my idol, he played a game in 1927 here in Fort Wayne at League Park, which is now Headwaters Park. He came back to Fort Wayne with Murderer's Row. Right. Now, Luke, you know Murderers a little bit about Murderer's Row. Yeah. Row. So there was 3,000 people in attendance. They let school off early so the kids can come watch. Murderer's Row, there were six players for the Yankees at that time. Earl Combs, Mark Koenig, then you got Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, and then you've got Bob Musil and Tony Lazari. Those six were pitcher's worst nightmare, and it was a spectacle back in the day. Yeah, to put that in perspective, that's like taking six of the best baseball players in today's game and putting them on one lineup. Yeah. They would absolutely kill pitcher stats. So, Babe Ruth came up to, the, came up to bat, right? It's the bottom of the 10th inning. Now, they're playing against a bunch of accountants and salespeople from the Lincoln Lifers here. And Babe Ruth comes up, it's tied three to three. Murderer's Row, they, they took them into the 10th inning in extra inner, innings here. So this is an amazing game. The city of Fort Wayne was buzzing. So Babe Ruth comes up and he hits the farthest home run of all time. So what he did was he came up to the plate, he hit the ball, it landed in a train car, and that train car was taken off towards Chicago. So he hit a 300 mile home run, guys. Oh, hold on, hold on. I, I heard this story before, and I put my investigative cap on. I went back to where that stadium was, got my little measuring wheel out, checked it out. Now, in order for it to have found that train car, it would have had to go another 600 yards and then made a sharp turn to the right and gone into that train car. So I'm gonna, I hate to bust your bubble about your idol there. I'm sure it was an impressive home run, but not quite that impressive. All right, guys, let's not get caught up in the details, okay? Let me show you how it's done. Okay. All right, let's right. see it. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, gosh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, Ooh, I guess that's my 40 bucks going over the wall there, so. <laughs> Well, not only do you come downtown just to eat or have entertainment, you can come down here to live or to stay. Fort Wayne has some great hotels to offer downtown. We have the Courtyard, we have the Hampton Inn, the Hilton, and then our newest is behind me, the Bradley. This opened back in 2021, and um, the theme is inspired by the Vera Bradley Designs, which of course, that's a big local company yep. to us. Got a lot of Fort Wayne art in there as well, but this is the biggest difference again between Fort Wayne about you know 10, 15, 20 years ago and today. So many more hotels, so you've got a place to stay when you're coming to all the great events, all the wonderful event centers we've got down here. Those hotels are making a huge difference. Now there's a lot of places to live too. There are a ton of new apartment buildings. Yeah, you know we've got the old G. We still got the Three Rivers down here, but we also now have the Cityscape Flats, Superior Lofts, Skyline Tower. All these are picturesque, beautiful apartments, and it's bringing so much more action downtown. I'm most excited, though, about the Pearl. This is yes. one that's going to open in 2024. It's going to be a live to work. So the main level will have retail space. There's a museum, apartments, and a parking garage. Yeah, it's just one of those things that, again, we've got, you know, Ch Chuck Sirac is bringing in over $50 million to help uh, make this place happen, and it's going to be just the Pearl of downtown.
Well, Tony, we are standing here at the landing. This has been a part of a much larger riverfront revitalization project, and this place is hopping. Let me tell you, any really any weeknight, especially on the weekends, you come down here, it is full. You know, it's really interesting down here is Columbia Street, or the landing, as they're saying, it's really the area of Columbia between Harrison and Calhoun. Now, here's the interesting fun fact. Thomas Alva Edison lived on this street in 1864. He was a telegraph operator for the railroad and he lived right down the block from us. That is super interesting. It feels like, um, you know, we're a part of history here. We are definitely a part of history. Also a part of history because then the famous druggist, Cornelius and Joseph Hoagland were here and they created the royal baking powder. They created it here and then they went on to make a ton of money. And listen, you've used a lot of baking powder. You've used a lot of baking powder when you've cooked. I have not. I usually, you know. <laughs> The, the really fun fact about this is, and I keep getting blown away by this, the street that we're on used to be a canal. Hmm. This is how the transportation hub was. They used to have canals through here. We have the railroad through here. This was literally the hub of transportation, commerce, business, everything. You had people living here. This was the hub of Fort Wayne. So Columbia Street was named for Dana Columbia. He was a famous hotel and boat operator. It was filled with taverns and uh, bakeries and all sorts of stuff, including the Randall Hotel. And right now there are still parts of the yeah. Randall Hotel here on the landing. The two columns that are right in front of the parking lot in front of us, that was the Randall Hotel. And the interesting thing is it's all coming back. This is becoming the hub once again for restaurants and nightlife and entertainment and hotels. And it's all being done here right around the landing. Let's talk about some of the architectural styles down here. You've got the Renaissance Revival style, the Romanesque Revival style, and the Italianate style as well. You know, the fun thing about downtown area is you have a little bit of everything when it comes to style and architecture. And you can just walk down here. And as you're walking down here, you have a plethora of restaurants that you can go to and take a look. Let's just start talking about a few of them. Well, my favorite, Mercado, mainly because I like the spicy margaritas. Well, one of the first ones to start all off was Tolan. And then Nawa, which is a great Asian fusion. The Landing Beer Company. The Deck, one of the originals. Paula's on Main. Club Soda. Oyster Bar. Hoppy Gnome. Cindy's Diner, the original, that, that, that's my favorite there. Connor's Rooftop. Copper Spoon. Takioka. Don Hall's. J.K. O'Donnell's. Junk Ditch Brewing. Kilwins. The Brands. Matt Anthony Brewing. Proximo. Ruth Chris. Sweets on Main. And Summit City Brew Works. You want it, it's downtown. Well, Kayla and I are standing on Main and Lafayette in front of the Fort Wayne Museum of Arts. And don't forget about the Performing Arts Center behind us as well. Yes, and I happen to know that the Museum of Arts is celebrating their 100th anniversary. How do I know that? Well, they built a sculpture. It's a 17-foot sculpture made by a Dale Enix. It's 17 foot tall, made out of aluminum, weighs 2,000 pounds, and it's on a 3,600 pound Indiana limestone base. It's incredible. It's absolutely so impressive. And the reason we're here is because downtown is imperative when it comes to the arts. There are so many things when it comes to the arts in downtown Fort Wayne. It, there's performing arts, there's galleries, there's murals, there's so many things. But let's talk about the galleries. Let's a talk bit, about some of those galleries. Well, first of all, Kayla, there's the Allen County Courthouse. Got to consider that a gallery of its own. For sure, and don't forget about Artlink Gallery, very popular down here. There's the Hour Center. I love the Castle Gallery at the Bass Mansion, the great architecture there to see. Roman Richardson might mention, yes. Absolutely. And that's also the Diocese Museum. And Lonnie, speaking of the Diocese Museum, we went there and did a stud shoot a couple months ago. It was so great that's to see cool. that. I love the Botanical Conservatory, especially for the kids. We love taking the kids to the Botanical Conservatory for the art. Speaking of kids, they would love to go to the Fort Wayne Firefighters Museum. And don't forget about the History Center, which is also Richard and Romanesque architectural style, just like the Bass Mansion. The other thing that's really cool about Fort Wayne is we have this 150 uh, mural and sculpture trail. We call it the Fort Wayne Trail of Art. That's incredible. Now, my favorite part of downtown's art scene is the performing art. I love performing art. I always have since I've been a kid, and there's so many places to see that downtown. And Lonnie, don't forget about all of the events celebrating the arts and festivals that are down here in downtown all the time. Right, so gather your kids or your grandkids, come down to Fort Wayne and visit and enjoy the arts. And by the way, did you see the granite ridge? Gran oh, let's go check it out. Sure. Uh, we got the sculpture, the granite ridge. Yes. We got the new one over cool. there. Cool. 
All right, Mike, you can't talk about downtown without talking about the vibrant scenes that are our parks, right? And Fort Wayne has a lot of parks to go over. So we're here at Promenade, so why don't we start here? All right, Luke, we have some awesome things happening here at Promenade Park. And as you can see behind us, we have some boat tours going on on the river here. Yeah. Hey, everybody! Hey. <laughs> So we, we, uh, we really run Fort Wayne off of the river scene, you know? Look, this park here, Promenade Park, is completely surrounded by rivers. All three rivers come together here, and there's a sculpture commemorating that called the Convergence Sculpture. Right. One of the things I love about the Fort Wayne parks is each of them seem to have their own niche, right? Promenade was the first one that really took the river and made it the forefront of the scene, right? We've got a pavilion that overlooks it. It's kind of that Mesian modern style. We've got this treetop canopy that kind of takes you out over the edge of the river. And there's just so much to do and so much to see right here in this park, but we got to mention all the other parks too. Yeah, Luke, and like you said, they, they've done a, such a great job surrounding these parks and having each little niche. Riverfront Fort Wayne does the same thing here. It starts here at Promenade Park. The River Greenway trails tie into it. We have Science Central, Martin Luther King yep. Bridge. We have the Wells Street Bridge here. And they do a really good job of marrying all of those things together in one central area. Right, now let's rapid fire some of these parks because we don't have time to go over all of them. But of course we can't skip Headwaters Park, right? That's where a lot of the festivals take place. Plus you've got the ice rink there in the winter. You've got Lawton Park, which is right on the other side there of the street. Lawton Park has the skate park. Uh, they've got five tons of concrete. It's lit at night. You go by you, on the River Greenway and you'll hear those skateboards hitting that concrete. Hopefully you're not hearing a whole lot of uh, <laughs> crashes, but uh, nice place for kids to work. And that's what I mean. Each of these have their own niche and that's the nice thing. They all complement each other very well. And back to Promenade Park here, Luke. It's been such a success around the Fort Wayne area that they are now in the works of expanding this with two more sections of park with more things to do down this area. All right, and I'm really just excited about the future that downtown has. We've seen it change so much over those 15 years since the ballpark has started and now they're talking about a rumor of a soccer field not too far from here that would also bring more attention and more entertainment to this downtown area so I think we should definitely we got time before we got to get back to work let's, let's check it out okay yeah, yeah absolutely right, let's do that well you know Izzy there is so much to do in Fort Wayne especially here downtown it is, there's so many different things you can do down here. One of the things that's become a bigger and bigger part of the downtown life has been the farmer's markets that you can find downtown Fort Wayne over the weekends. And it's not just during the summer, it goes year round. It does. And of course, another big part would be where we just spent this morning down at Par uh, Parkview Field here, the home of the Fort Wayne Tin Caps is a great place to come down here. And again, the favorite part for our, my family is still usually the fireworks. Uh, it's a great time to spend in the evenings there with your family. Listen, I love baseball, but anybody that knows me knows I'm a basketball girl at heart, <laughs> which means I love the Fort Wayne Mad Ants. And when my kids were little, we especially loved going to the Fort Wayne Children's Zoo. Clearly, everybody loves that. We're always voted one of the best zoos, children's zoos in the country. And when you're downtown, again, we've got lots of food trucks that you can see down here. And then, if you've ever been to Fort Wayne during the summer, one of the biggest parts you're going to see here are all the festivals. There is Greek Fest, German Fest, Three Rivers Festival. Yes. I mean, every type weekend you come down, there's something going on. They just added Busker Fest, which is one of the ones that I'm really excited to see here as well. I've not participated yet, but man, that looks amazing. Listen, always a, some sort of convention going on at the Grand Wayne Center. Also, big weddings. There's sometimes some big weddings at the Grand Wayne Center, and I have been to many a cheer competition there too, and the Embassy Theater. Mm, great. Everything from from big shows that come through the Embassy Theater. That's a beautiful part about being between Detroit and Chicago. Those passing through, we yeah. need to see those big things at the Embassy Theater to uh, some of our local uh, artists too get yeah. to perform down there. And lastly, of course, we've got Electric Works coming. So we've got the Union Street Market that's gonna be there as well. Another great market to participate in. It's gonna be a really cool thing. Can't wait for that to happen. So much to do and to see in downtown Fort Wayne. All right, guys, we are out here at the Well Street Bridge. And fun fact, this is actually the place where Kayla and I got engaged. It feels like I should go down on a knee again. I already <laughs> said yes, you don't have to do that again. We're good. Have it. <laughs> <laughs> well, at the Well Street Bridge here, it was uh, done in 1884, and it is one of the last standing Whipple Truss bridges. I don't even know how they came up with that sort of a term, <laughs> but that is what this bridge is called, and it's really iconic here in Fort Wayne. Now, right behind us, you're going to see the Fort Wayne Outfitters and Bike Depot. Now, what you can get there is outdoor adventure all in one. You can rent kayaks, you can rent bikes and you can really explore downtown Fort Wayne with that being your hub. I mean, the three rivers are so important in Fort Wayne and that is the central
central area of the promenade. You can do boat tours, kayaking, all sorts of things here at Promenade and the Swell Street Bridge because of these rivers. And if you've never explored the water area trails in Fort Wayne, there's called Paddle Trails. You can find that on downtown's website and that's gonna get you started on how to tour these wonderful rivers that we have here in Fort Wayne. All right, Kayla, let's go uh, jump in one of those kayaks Ooh, and take off. Okay, now we've spent so much time on this one. Let's start. One of my favorite things to do, and I highly recommend anyone and everyone do it, is just come downtown, park your car, start walking around, and you can see all the different amazing architectural styles that are here. Come down and look at some of the amazing churches, including St. Paul's and the Church of the Immaculate Conception. And we've been blessed to have some famous architects do some designs here in Fort Wayne. For example, Louis Kahn, he designed the United Arts Center. Our own Frank Lloyd Wright has a home in Fort Wayne that he designed. This is what was a Usonian design. So it was very flat, flat roof, big overhangs. And Concordia Theological Seminary, which was designed by the famous Aero Saarinen. And then lastly, we have Michael Graves. And I know him from Target. He inspired a lot of designs at Target, but he designed a home southwest. It's called the Cube House. I remember that looking at that house. It's gorgeous. But why don't we just take a couple seconds here. Let's name some of the big buildings that you can come downtown, take a look at, drive by or walk by and see, including our own courthouse right behind us. Right across the street from us, we have the city county building. And then the Summit Building. Right now, this is the Indiana Michigan Power Building. This is the tallest building in Fort Wayne, 27 stories. But did you know it's the tallest reinforced concrete structure in Indiana? I did not know that. And then let's not forget the famous embassy, formerly called the Envoy Theater. Okay, I got my cracker, Jack. Dude, I don't know about you guys, I discovered a lot of things today. There is so much history in downtown Fort Wayne and so much new development, and it all started with this. So what was y'all's favorite part of today? Well, besides peanuts, <laughs> I love sculptures, and I also like museums that are actually older than me. <laughs> uh, well, I do too, and I'm excited for the Pearl that's going to open oh, in 2024 yeah. because it's going to have a fantastic museum inside. I really encourage you to be a visitor here in Fort Wayne with all the restaurants and hotels downtown. You don't have to go far to have a great experience. I love all the parks. I mean, we even have a dog park. How great is that? <laughs> and the architecture. Obviously, Granite Ridge loves architecture. It's all down here downtown. I love all the entertainment, all the things there are to do downtown. I love that we've incorporated Babe Ruth into our <laughs> own Fort Wayne history. That's great. Now, speaking of Babe Ruth, he had a lot of nicknames. How many think we can name? How about the uh, Great Bambino? Sultan of Swat. <laughs> How about the behemoth of Bam? Uh, <laughs> the what? Colossus of Clout. The Colossus the of Clout. The Mandolin of Ball. <laughs> All right, okay, oh, enough about no, 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 baseball. We gotta close. Kayla, would you close for us? <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining us today. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about who we are, what we do, and why we do what we do so well, please pick up the phone and give us a call. Visit our website, or even better yet, come in and talk to us. We would love to build your new home. That was a great yeah, tip yeah, to the sandlot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can throw this ball to the baseball field. 20 bucks to the field from here. Go. Like St. Paul's Church and also the, uh, the I, I couldn't say the word. Yeah, I just I just couldn't have it. Yeah. All right, Kayla, you got to back up those words now. Right. Okay. Twenty dollars. There we go. Oh. Oh gosh. Oh, I know. Oh. I'm buy it. oh my gosh. I know. I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, oh gosh. I told you. <laughs> Twenty bucks is yours.